Hi, welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick. Let's jump right down into this one and waste no time. Here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT on the one hour chart and Binance is our data source. And as you can kind of see, Bitcoin finds itself in a critical moment. This is where we find Bitcoin resting on the equilibrium, which happens to coincide with our 50 and 200 EMAs. It's at this particular point, Bitcoin is either going to break upwards or break down. I think we're going to jump down into this a little bit more detail um i do think we have the possibility of a move to the upside i think we're going to break up a little ways here so let's jump into this right so we can see that we are in, right in the red areas right here for, and uh, this is basically an internal sell order block one of the things that we have noted here is that we are consolidating in the range that basically means there's very few sell orders remaining here if price isn't being automatically rejected from the range so this consolidation gives me hope that actually we're more than likely going to see a break upwards from this range right at the moment finding support on the 250 emas and the equilibrium upward move break through the resistance Okay, that's kind of where my mind is at at the moment. The move to the upside, though, I don't think is going to be massive. I think we're going to find upper resistance. We can see that right up here uh, with probably around the $27,500 range being kind of where you can next kind of find that level of resistance coming in for Bitcoin. Um, and we are still in a bullish state of play at the moment, but I think this move to the upside is going to be quite limiting. Let's actually show you. Um, what is going on uh, from the kind of typical kind of higher highs, higher lows situation, uh, which if I go ahead and throw this on, you can kind of see we find ourselves with that situation right there. Now, I can adjust this, of course, um, maybe by not taking it to uh, the extreme of that side, but maybe just bringing it in uh, on here. You can kind of see that we have this higher high higher low situation right here and we're probably going to be looking at testing that upper range it might not even push full fully to that 2500 it might be actually we're finding resistance right up here on this trend line so it'd be interesting to kind of see how that plays out on this upper range of our sell order blocks whether or not there's going to be larger orders there that's going to drag the price action to the downside or not okay so smart money concept still looks like we have a potential break upwards from this range here at the moment now elliott wave theory if i were to to uh, basically apply some just on this chart here and uh, we're looking for a three-wave structure you can see right there that resistance I'm going to bring this resistance in uh, on a, as a little yellow box area just here okay the resistance comes right here you can see that our one-to-one -one ratio with an ABC structure a B C structure comes right up into the upper area of resistance at around 25, uh, 27,578 approximately, right? So you can see it right in there. Be interesting to kind of see whether or not we kind of truncate maybe around that 27,400 on the 786 or whether or not we're going to just, you know, continue this move up here a little ways further. Okay, now there are some interesting things because from an Elliott Wave Theory point of view, if we take a look at this one, we're actually anticipating uh, to stay below 27,524, uh, which is our wave one low point and um, so our wave four is essentially what we're looking at here so a breakdown is kind of where we're looking for on this one now we can see already on our four hour chart that we are overball but it's just the hourly chart so we might have a false start here we might start to move up a little bit but ultimately we are looking for a move to the downside we have currently moved up higher than we were yesterday so and that does change our target range ever so slightly the higher that wave four goes the lower that wave five goes and so therefore our target range has changed once again uh, this time um, it will be ever so slightly lower let me just go ahead and move these fibs over this side so you can see the numbers a little bit clearer it basically comes in at twenty six thousand and twenty five dollars and twenty six thousand three twenty okay so you can kind of see it right in there that completes that fifth wave movement so all look on these hourly charts these are all micro movements these are not things that um you know want to get to get too carried away with ultimately uh these are going to play out probably within the next few days and uh, we kind of put a pin in this one eventually it will kind of either be um proven to be true with this move to the downside or will break up with uh, higher than twenty seven thousand five hundred and twenty four and in which case we basically invalidate the idea that we come down here okay and we end up with a zigzag pattern rather than an impulsive pattern okay so both of those are interesting now Yesterday, we kind of covered off a little bit on the e, uh, CM, CMEs. Um, these are the gaps that are left behind uh, with the closed positions on the daily and um, and opens and closes and the gaps that are left there in between. Um, so we can see that we filled this gap here. Uh, that There are a couple to the downside. And I forgot yesterday to mention there is a high, one higher in the price chart. This is 34,455 to 35,180. Okay. Um, so CME gaps uh, do have a tendency to get filled out. 
uh, then you can kind of look through the history and say yes they've kind of all been filled out there are the ex occasional exception which are not okay so it's not like it's a hard and fast rule where you say these things categorically do get filled out and you know it has to happen and all that kind of stuff uh, because you can see right here this one did not it almost got filled but didn't fully fill out this one comes in at 9735 to 9925 and of course we could speculate that maybe there's a requirement to actually go ahead and fill that at some point in the future um, you never know now ultimately everything else here has already been filled so that's the only one I can see that hasn't actually been filled on the price chart in the history here um, and this one goes back to July 2020 at least on our um, Bitcoin CME futures one day uh, chart so for now yeah we kind of have the interesting kind of viewpoint here because we could potentially go up and grab that 35k one um, alternatively we can come down and grab the 20k one right and so therefore we're kind of in this state of flux where it can go in either direction I think there's a higher probability that we actually break down um, and we take the lower one than before we take the higher one because these higher ones they can actually you know, get grabbed later they don't have to be grabbed right away and I do think we'll grab this one in the future at some point Bitcoin will be above this level, right? Uh, whereas if uh, you do go, go up and we do gonna go into that kind of 35K range, what is the probability of moving down into that range, right? And grabbing the lower one, it's, it's going to be slightly tougher uh, than it is to move down and then rally on up, at least in my opinion. So I think um, the probability sits here with uh, with a move to the downside but again we can push up higher and we can push down after it's all possible there's nothing that's impossible with all this kind of stuff um, but it's worth noting uh, that the CME gap here is 20,030 uh, 20,330 to 21,110 uh, on the low side and on the high side 34,455 to 35,180 right and um, so we know that those are the two gaps that realistically we're going to be looking for it's either going to be one of them um, we can be and will be both eventually in my opinion it's just how you kind of get there and um, so when we take our charts up into our daily time frame uh, on the smart money concepts these also happen to coincide with our fair value Value gaps right we we're talking about this uh, yesterday so we have our fair value gaps also stacked out here and so when these are basically created with imbalances in the order books as in there's uh, too much buying pressure and not enough liquidity to fill the buys within that range price jumps to the next area where the liquidity sits and so we find here is that and these gaps were left behind and price just like CMEs like to go down and fill them not a guarantee but it's something that we know that it does tend to happen more often than not so we can see that there are fair value gaps all the way down towards that $19,000 level on the daily and they are all the way down here uh, towards 17,000 on the weekly time frame okay so we want to bear in mind all of those things now from our on-chain data we can see that we have 4.131 million uh, going on to exchanges uh, in 2023 this is from the 1st of January through to yesterday which was the 2nd of June uh, we can see that we had 4.1008 million coming off the exchanges basically meaning that 30,000 more Bitcoin went on to the exchanges and stayed there this is usually seen as a bearish tell because essentially you only put Bitcoin onto the exchange if you're looking to sell it okay and you usually take Bitcoin away from the exchanges when you're looking to hold it and uh, have bought it for a long term Term, right and so we want to be a little bit cautious here um, it's not a massive amount it's probably more neutral than anything um, but it's worth noting that it is slightly more in the bearish way of, of things at the moment now from our inflows and outflows line graphs we can see that 2023 has been pretty much you know matching up inflows and outflows and giving us an indication that um, you know, the demand and supply is well balanced out uh, comparing to 2019 i.e the 1st of January 2019 through to the 2nd of June 2019 we can see that volumes were significantly higher with 7.6251 million going onto the exchanges and 7.6251 million coming off the exchanges and yes that's 7.6251 both on inflows and outflows they are completely neutral they cancelled each other out um, but the volume is significantly higher than that of what we saw over in 2023 now if we go back to 2015 what do we see well we can see that we had 5.2260 million going onto the exchanges and 5.1135 million coming off the exchanges very similar to what you see in right now with more bitcoin um, going on than is coming off again one of the things that's worth noting we have significantly more bitcoin moving around between the exchanges and people um 
in 2015, 2019 than what we do here in 2023. So 2023, with more Bitcoin out in circulating supply than ever before, we see significantly lower volume. Um, and that's quite interesting. It basically tells us that we can't necessarily be looking at the 2019 bullish market and saying, look, we're doing exactly the same thing when the volumes are vastly different, um, almost half in fact. So we want to be a little bit cautious. Now, when we take a look at the wallet counts, we can see that wallet counts are on the, still on the increase from the retail side of things. 12 million wallets have over 0.01 Bitcoin in them. Uh, we can see that the shrimps, uh, as in the retailers uh, with one Bitcoin, uh, still looking to accumulate a little here. Krill over 0.1 Bitcoin, actually starting to kind of waver a little bit. Uh, and Dolphins actually kind of taking profit and coming out of their positions right now. These are the high net worth individuals uh, with 10 Bitcoin or more. And these are just 90 day views, of course. If we jump over into institutional level funds, uh, we have Sharks, which are 100 Bitcoin or more. Um, again, they've been accumulating, but have been potentially just, you know, riding the waves as they see them. Um, sometimes they do incredibly well uh, with their trading, and these are professional level traders in my opinion. Uh, they basically were buying up in December last year, um, and then they started selling off aggressively when we hit 30k. Um, and so you can see that they've been trading incredibly well. We'll put a take a look at a macro view on that in a moment. Uh, Bitcoin whales have accumulated a little bit here, but don't get too carried away. These are all minor movements on the big grand scale of things. Uh, they have pulled back a little bit over the last few days. Uh, so from the 26th of May. Uh, there were 20,039, and then uh, by the 31st of May, there were 20,000 and uh, 2,024 wallets, so we slightly pushed up yesterday to 29. Um, so ultimately, yeah, there's a little bit of fluctuations going on, a little bit of, uh, of movement going on here with the whale wallets. The Kraken wallets are on the decrease. We can see that we peaked out up here in the last 90 days. In April, uh, there were 121 of these wallets. The low side uh, on the 5th of May was 115, and they're currently rocking 116 wallets. Again, these guys are the ones that are holding 10,000 Bitcoin or more. These are uh, what I call Kraken, but um, most people will probably refer to these as humpback whales, uh, whereas your whales typically only contain 1,000 Bitcoin. Now, bear in mind... There's a key word in all of these uh, pieces of analysis, which is over. OK, so what I mean by this is it's a wallet count. Uh, a wallet is counted in this analysis if they have over 1000 Bitcoin, for example. OK, that would mean that all of these Kraken and humpback whale wallets over 10,000 Bitcoin are automatically included in our 1000 BTC wallets or more analysis. That means that when we see a decrease here, it doesn't mean that you see an increase this side. Okay, these are different things going on here. This allows us to have a more accurate analytical approach to the charts when it comes to counting Bitcoin wallets. If we were to isolate each one, it's going to be spiking up and down all over the place. So we want to make sure that we have a more linear approach to how we look at these line graphs so that we can actually make more informed decisions and actually show us trends rather than just showing us spikes to the upside and to the downside all the time. It's not going to be useful for anyone. So what we want to do is we want to be able to ascertain whether or not there's a trend in a pattern uh, over a long period of time. And so 90 days is not a huge period of time when we're trying to do that. And so it's important that we actually zoom out probably over 365 days. And when we do that, we actually get different points of view. Um, so for example, the shark wallets, as I said, they bought up in December quite massively here, right? And then they started to aggressively sell off and they came all the way back down. They've aggressively been buying again. Now these are professional level traders. They've either noticed something really fantastic in the price action and uh, you know they're going to be able to kind of swing trade it or whatever. Alternatively, they get it wrong. They don't always get these moves correct. For example, as you can see over here, price action started to go down and they were accumulating. OK, and then they sold at a, a loss. OK, so they took the loss and then they accumulated again. The timing wasn't quite right. So it's important that we know that they don't always get it right. And um, and when we take a look at the the 90 day view um, for uh, for sharks, for example, we can see that actually it looks really good. It looks like they've been accumulating. But on the 365 day view, you get actually get the view of what they have been doing, which was buying and then selling and then buying again. And of course, we can see that they don't always get it right as well. So it's important that we reflect on that. Now, from our 365 day view, you can see the retail investors, uh, one Bitcoin or more, have just been aggressively buying up. They've been buying up every single dip, uh, believing that the bottom is in every single time. The bottom is in over here. The bottom is in in June. The bottom 
bottom is in in November and so forth, right? And they buy aggressively. Um, and you can see here that they're starting to kind of waver a little bit. They're not accumulating aggressively anymore. This is because times are getting harder. The people are feeling uh, a tightness around their funding and they're not necessarily able to kind of FOMO in in the way that they used to. Most people now have already got you know, credit card debt that's mounting at all time highs. Uh, savings accounts at all-time lows um, and essentially that what, what funding do they have left now to kind of you know invest they've already kind of invested and potentially paid premium prices don't get me wrong that's not for everyone there are still pockets of people who are able to still invest in cryptocurrency markets specifically bitcoin and um, but for most of these particular retail investors i think they've been uh, slowly working their way up and uh, I think with increasing um, cost of living with inflation going the way that it is uh, mortgage rates uh, increasing mortgages uh, fixed term rates coming to an end and obviously starting to see people having to kind of downsize their homes we see a lot of stuff going on in the housing market that is going to affect retail investors specifically as well um, that does bother me when I start seeing you know no real kind of selling pressure here because at some point I do think it's going to get to a to that point where these retail investors are going to have no choice but to sell their assets so we want to be a little bit cautious when it comes to these guys now um, if i can find my cursor here we can take a look at the um the larger sized wallets right so the whales for example i said don't get carried away and i meant it we can see that they've accumulated a little bit recently but it's nothing in comparison to what they've been selling off for quite some time and as I often say, there's always a buyer and there's always a seller. In order for these guys to be accumulating, we really do need to see a significant... Um a significant downward movement from wallet counts that have less Bitcoin because they got to buy the Bitcoin from someone, right? So retail investors historically are the ones that have sold their Bitcoin to the whale investor. And so until the whale investors see that and until retail investors are selling, I'm not seeing, I'm not expecting to see anyway, a surge in the wallet counts for our 1000 BTC wallets. A transfer has occurred over 2022. Uh, which was essentially moving Bitcoin from large institutional and billionaire investors over to the retail investor. Okay, that was 2022. And in 2023, we haven't yet seen the shift from retail investor to the whale investor. And until that happens, we can't really be too carried away thinking that the market is going to be pushing up into new all-time highs. If anything, considering how the whale, op whale kind of institutional investors operate, there's actually probably more chance of a big move to the downside where these guys then buy up cheap Bitcoin from retail investors that panic sell. Um, and we see this time and time again. Um, it can be very, very slow. Sometimes it can be very, very quick. In this particular case, it's dragging its heels quite nastily. It's going to take quite some time, I think, before we actually start to see this thing playing out uh, to full effect. But for the most part, that's kind of what we're witnessing here. Now, that can change. We may see you know bitcoin um you know humpback whales selling for whatever reasons a micro strategy selling off some bitcoin in which case the whales might be able to accumulate that um but at some point you know someone's got to sell their bitcoin if we want to see the whales investing right so everything has to balance out essentially so yeah for, for now that's kind of where that sits now our kraken size well it's so accumulated right and um, this is something that um a lot of people don't, they, they look at this and they think like the whales are buying, the whales are accumulating, look at this, fantastic, right? And for the most part, you're right, um, but you've got to understand the why as well, right? So um, yes, they've been accumulating. The question is, why were they accumulating? And, um, you know, what are they intending to do with such vast amounts of BTC? Um, now, they've actually been, uh, they spiked out and peaked uh, with 123 wallets in November 2022. Since then, and since moving upwards in price, they've actually been kind of, you know, selling off a little bit of Bitcoin. They started to accumulate again a little bit here, but ultimately there's nothing amazing going on. And so the question becomes, OK, well, if uh, if that was all they were looking for, you know, a small spike from 15 to 20K, for example, and that's what was causing them to start selling off, then that's incredibly interesting. You've got to also bear in mind, guys, right, that you can see this accumulation. They were accumulating here at around $19,000 right into the lows and then they start selling at around 15,000 but it doesn't make a lot of logical sense right unless of course what they're really trying to do is suppress the price of bitcoin or just grab liquidity what were they doing and why are they doing it right if we take a look at 2018 
for these humpback and kraken sized whales um then or, or humpback whales and, and kraken sized wallets uh, then we can actually see you know this is what happened in 2018's bear market they accumulated during this bear market and then used that to flood the uh, markets with excess bitcoin dragging in the actual bear market low before really taking it on out of there and um, so you can ask say ask ourselves is this manipulation are they literally just manipulating the market so that they can capture as much of the liquidity as possible uh, or is it just coincidence was there something that spooked these guys out of the market i'll leave that for you guys to decide the data is the data we can see quite clearly that they something happened here in 2018 where they just dumped a load of bitcoin i say dumped loose loosely it's not necessarily selling it is basically moving it onto a platform that's going to make it available for purchase which basically means the supply and demand gets imbalanced and you see price nosedive very very quickly right and so with that kind of power comes great responsibility now was this deliberate was this not deliberate i'll leave that for you guys to decide um that's not one for me to kind of tell you that's one that i'm just saying this is what happened is this going to happen again I'll let you make that decision personally. I think it will happen again. Um, so yeah, everything on Bitcoin is looking pretty interesting, right? We can see fair value gaps on the daily and on the weekly timeframes. We have CME gaps, um, both on the high and the low side. I suspect that it's more probable that we move down to grab that one before we move on up and do that. Um, but it'll be interesting to kind of see how that plays out because both of these are technically possible. We can come up and still come down. Um, 35K, uh, I think, will be uh, possibly easier than 20 at this point in time. But um, I think there's going to be a lot of resistance that basically prevents it. So it'll be interesting. Like the gap between uh, where we currently are trading and uh, the 35k area is 28% uh, and the move to the downside here is actually it's actually it's easier it's 25 I thought it was the other way maybe my eyes are just deceiving me there so technically easier to go down than it is to go up uh, in that regard momentum though is shifting to the upside I think and um, so I'm still looking for 30k BTC uh, on a slightly larger time frame so uh, I still think that is technically possible um, and we're just looking at this potential move here uh, as maybe something that is beginning a trend structure to move to the downside for now uh, a little bit too uncertain but i'm going to leave the video there let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below if you did find this useful and informative smash the like button i do appreciate that if you're new why not go ahead and subscribe and guys i'll catch you all in the next one we are not financial advisors none of what we have communicated early or in writing here should be considered as financial advice it is not do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers and understand that investing in any crypto is risky if you do you need to be prepared to lose your entire investment this video is an information against the investors only all our videos are strictly personal opinions please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice there are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people our videos are not financial advice